Good show, guys. Good show, Dana White. All right, let's let's get into it. I know it's been a while since my uh, last, you know, UFC, like post UFC review of it, but um, that's what I'm gonna do for UFC 117: Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen. Uh, this was a heck of a night, but um, uh, uh, th th yeah, there's just a few things that I, I wanna. Um, address here. Some my interpretation of it is different than most people's here, and I'm surprised that no one else has has brought something like this up regarding Anderson Silva's performance against Chael Sonnen back on uh, August seventh, two thousand ten. But uh, yeah, it was a good night. It was um, one of the best events. You know, a lot of people showed up. A lot of things went down. Um, all right. First one on the card, uh, Chael Sonnen talked a lot about this fight, and to an extent, he did a lot of what he said he was going to do. He threw Anderson Silva on his back in every single round, dropped him at the beginning with um, with one of the punches that, you know, you don't see. That's the one that, that puts you down. And um, it looked real, but uh, I, I was sitting in the Buffalo Wild Wings, and I was thinking this the entire time I was watching the fight. I was thinking, Anderson Silva does not look like himself. And... Uh, he didn't really, and that was a, one of the that, that was one of the only problems I have with this fight. Other than that, it was a great, you know, uh, come from behind win. But uh, the, yeah, the more I saw him perform, like the more it confused me. Cause um, but then I, I started to get an idea. I think we are going to see a different Anderson Silva in the UFC from now on. You know. Uh, the, you know, the same Anderson Silva that showed up and took out Forrest Griffin is a different one that, um, you know, outpointed Talos Latis and Damian Maya and Patrick Cote and, uh, well, James Irvin, too, of course. You know, stuff like that. But um, it's like he wants to do something different every time. And in this time, I um, I had picked Silva to win. I know that my pick video was not posted up, but um, I, I might do that eventually. Um, yeah, I picked Anderson Silva to basically dance his way to a five-round unanimous decision victory, but uh, this this went to the fifth round, and in the final round, he submitted him, but before that, Chael Sonnen won every single round. Um, on 4 one one MMA, um, they had Chael Sonnen winning the first round 10-8 to eight in favor of him. Um, uh, yeah, Sonnen was busy the entire time, the referee, I, f I forgot who it was, uh, didn't stop the fight at all, maybe it was... Uh, Josh Rosenthal? No, no. Anyways. Um, hold on a second. No, that's better. Alright, got got some light, you know. Make make the space more visually, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, but here is my thoughts on Anderson Silva's performance. And I, I know that some people might not disagree with this, or they might disagree with me on this. But I think Anderson Silva basically gave those first four rounds to Chael Sonnen. Uh, Anderson Silva basically walked up to Chael Sonnen and told him, okay, you want to do what you want to me? Go ahead. I'm going to give you a chance. You can pound me, you can do what I want. He was playing possum for four rounds. Look at Anderson Silva's face carefully. You know, he was, his face was not that of, oh my gosh, I'm getting hurt. I, I, need, I need help. I can't do anything against this guy. You know, it was, as he was getting hit like that, he was calm. He was... You know, since he had like a light smile on his face, he looked like he was—he looked like he was half asleep, and uh, yeah, it was something I had not seen from Anderson Silva. But he—I guess he wanted to be more passive in this fight. He wanted to let Chael Sonnen do whatever he wanted to him, up to the point when Anderson Silva decided to turn the switch on in the fifth round, and. Yeah, yeah, because Silva went into this fight knowing, okay, Chael Sonnen's not going to knock me out. He's not going to finish me with his ground and pound, or Anderson Silva's guard is good enough to avoid that. And he was, you know, Anderson Silva stayed just busy enough so that the referee would not stop the fight. And um, he wanted to show as little resistance as possible to, to throw Chael Sonnen off of his game plan, because Silva knew, because if I was Silva, I would, would have anticipated that Chael Sonnen would have expected me to go out there, balls to the wall, you know, ba 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 ba, done, you know, in devastating fashion, and to just go out and smash him in a couple of seconds. But 
Anderson Silva didn't do that. He waited until the fifth round, the final round, and then threw up the triangle choke, and then some of them was just like, oh, tap. Done. Like, it was more of, I think, the triangle choke than the arm bar, but it was a hell of a submission win. And, um, you know, my Brazilian friend was chanting, chanting something crazy in Portuguese right next to me, and uh, everyone was going crazy. It was a packed Buffalo Wild Wings. It really was. I got there like two hours early or something, but... Um, yeah, I think uh, Chael Sonnen dominated the fight not because he was that much better, but because Anderson Silva was letting him dominate the fight. And that's why at the end he walked up to him. The guy that's been t track taking, talking all that trash, he put the belt down, bowed to his knees, and then he must have gone over and shook Steven Seagal's hand and thanked him. Yeah, one of the most surreal videos I found. Steven Seagal coaching Anderson Silva. I'm not joking. You know, look it up on YouTube. You know, he, he's like, I think uh, Anderson Silva is going to win. He doesn't have a whole lot of things or anything. Well, anyways. Yeah, I, I have a few of Steven Seagal's movies, all that stuff. Fun times. Anyways, I was talking enough about that. The rest of the card, John Fitch versus Thiago Alves. It was exactly the type of, you know, John Fitch fight we all expected. Good win for him. Again, only GSP has his number in the octagon. As for Alves, he needs to move up to, to uh, light heavyweight and maybe take on, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, oh, going back to Anderson Silva. Uh, I just found a post right now on, on the Bleach Report by uh, Brandon Hinchman saying that it's conclusive. John Jones would demolish Anderson Silva. John Jones would demolish Anderson Silva? Now... Granted, um, I, of course, I'm not kind of counting out the rising MMA phenom, John Jones, especially after his convincing the destruction of Vladimir Matyoshenko, but um, the way that Anderson Silva is going to approach John Jones is not going to be the same way that he is going to approach Chael Sonnen. So, you know, don't think it would be as easy as Chael Sonnen made it look like, you know. You know, Silva basically, you know, he was playing possum the entire time, but that's what I think. You know, maybe that wasn't it, but if you look at his face, uh, he he was like relaxed. Oh, you're not, you're not hurting me, man. Oh, you're not hurting me. Oh, it's like, oh, Chael Sonnen, no, don't hit me. Oh, please don't. Oh, no. Okay. Anyway, next one. Clay Guida versus Rafael Dos Anjos. I, I don't know why I picked Dos Anjos, but it was a good round for Clay Gu win for Clay Guida. I picked Dos Anjos because of his convincing arm bar in Abu Dhabi against Terry Edom. And um, Guida, it was raining outside. Guida looked really good, but um, he won by submission, not because of like a choke, but because Dos Anjos suffered a jar injury during the fight. That could have won submission of the night, but submission of the night went to Anderson Silva, of course, and to Matt Hughes. Oh my gosh. Figures when, when I bet against, the only time I bet against Matt Hughes, because I picked Ricardo Almedia in this fight. Because Ricardo Almedia, I knew, you know, he possessed the better stand-up and the better submission defense, or at least so I thought, and that's how it looked like it was going to go for the first two and a half minutes of the fight. It only lasted one round, Matt Hughes throws him a looping left hook, tags Ricardo Almedia on the chin, puts Ricardo Almedia on another planet, and then grabs like a front arm headlock, puts Almedia to sleep, out cold, and man, Matt Hughes, you, you did your thing, man. Dang, I, I don't know if he's going to... He's probably not going to get the belt back, but that's a hell of a win after being inducted into the, Hall of C into the UFC Hall of Fame. Good job, Matt Hughes. And the Roy Nelson Jr. Dos Santos fight? Wow. Um, uh, this one, we learned a lot of things about Roy Nelson, and we still have not learned that much about Junior Dos Santos. Sagano. Uh, I need to find out why he's called that. Anyways, Roy Nelson, when he doesn't get the fight done quick, and when he's not on top, doing his thing... Things don't always go his way. Juno Dos Santos, mostly what we know about him is he's really good with his hands and doing damage with them, and that's what he did for three rounds in route to a three-round unanimous decision. Dropped Nelson at least twice. I don't know why Nelson didn't try to get the takedown earlier on. Maybe he thought he could tag him. Nelson was trying to set up, you know, that kind of jab overhand right, but he was really starting to telegraph it after the first round. As for Dos Santos, give him the winner. Finally give him a title shot, you know. He hasn't lost in the UFC. He only has one loss, that's by submission. So give him 